This is going to be episode 5 of God's Game of Thrones. And we're going to look at the subject, Noteworthy Angels. There is an innumerable company of angels. But there are some that really stand out in the Bible. And these angels are on the winning side. They know who the real king is in God's Game of Thrones. It's God himself. And these beings existed before Adam and Eve. So it's only right that we look into them before we begin to look at the humans. Before we get deep into the kings in the Bible, we need to do some more character building here. And these are just going to be some noteworthy angels. And the first one is Michael. Michael the Archangel. And if you look at Revelation 12, 7 through 9, it says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So this is Michael and his angels versus Satan and his angels. And this is where Hollywood got the idea for Star Wars, seeing as how angels are referred to as stars many times in the Bible. And contrary to many beliefs, this seems to be future, when Satan, as Leviathan, falls bodily. The first time he fell positionally, uh, Michael is obviously very strong and courageous, and he is the only archangel mentioned in the Bible, and Jude Verse 9, it says, Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. Durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuked thee. So some teach this means Michael is inferior to the devil. And this could be true. However, you saw him cast the devil out of heaven in the previous verse we covered. So is it that Michael is weaker or is he just waiting on God's timing to do a particular thing? Uh, Michael is mentioned three times in the book of Daniel. In Daniel 10, 13, 10, 21, and 12, 1. Each time he is in favor of Daniel and God's people, Israel. Uh, Michael has God and his plan in mind with everything that he's doing. He has such great power, but is willing to humble himself and be under the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And the Bible plainly teaches that the angels are greater in power and might. Yet you see many humans that won't even humble themselves under God like Michael does. In Daniel 12, 1, it says, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time, and at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. So that's Michael. And in 1 Thessalonians 4.16, the voice of Michael the archangel will be heard when the saints rise in the rapture. It says the voice of the archangel. And Michael is the only archangel mentioned in scripture. Michael is going to play a huge role during the tribulation. It says... In Daniel 12, 1, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble. And Michael is going to stand up during that time. So here are some ways you can be like Mike. You know the phrase, like Mike. I want to be like Mike. Here is some ways you can be like him. The first one is he stands against Satan. James 4, 7 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God, Resist the devil and he will flee from you. When facing Lucifer, the former king of both kingdoms, you need to realize that you can't defeat him on your own. It will take the Lord. And Michael, in Jude 9, said to the devil, The Lord rebuke thee. He stands against Satan. And number two, he stands for God's people. In Daniel 12, 1, it says he stands for the children of thy people. If you want to be like Mike, then quit taking the side of the world over the side of God's people. Number three, stand during times of trouble. Michael is going to stand for the Lord during the tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble. 
If you're a born-again believer, then you won't be going through the tribulation, but you are going to face tribulation. Will you stand during that time? So that's Michael, the archangel. Number two is another angel. Another noteworthy angel is the angel that binds Satan. Many teach that this is also Michael, the archangel, but I have no idea who it is. So I'm just going to talk about it like it's a different angel. Revelation 20, verse 1 through 3. It says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. So this angel is believed to be Michael the archangel by many. However, it doesn't come out and call him that. So we can look at him as another noteworthy angel. Notice this angel is from heaven. This isn't an angel who has left his first estate. He has the key of the bottomless pit, which was given him by Jesus Christ. So the Lord trusted this angel enough to take the key off of his keychain and hand it to the angel. It's interesting that the devil doesn't even have the keys to his own house that he's going to live in. The Lord got the keys when he rose from the dead on the third day. As it says in Revelation 1.18, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen, and have the keys of hell and death. We know that the Lord is the one who gives his beings power over the devil. So we know he gives his angel enough strength and a strong enough chain to bind Satan in the bottomless pit. At the same time, could it be that this angel has a, even more power than the devil? Or just a little more juiced up at the time than the devil? Just a speculation there. But in Revelation 20 and verse 2, it says, He laid hold on the dragon. Imagine the courage. Imagine the guts this angel will have when he goes to bind the former king of both kingdoms. Satan has the baddest meanest, scariest reputation of any evil creature in the Bible. However, this angel comes down pretty effortlessly and binds him in the bottomless pit. So whoever this angel is, he was picked out of an innumerable company of angels to be the angel to do such a tremendous job here. He is a noteworthy angel. Do you have the courage of this angel? Would the Lord trust you with the keys of the bottomless pit? The angel binds the devil in a bottomless pit. Could you throw your pet sin in the bottomless pit? Do you have the courage? Do you have the courage to step out and do what God's called you to do? Okay, that, so that's the, the angel that binds Satan. And number three is another angel mentioned in the Bible named Gabriel. And Gabriel is the other angel. You see named in your Bible, however, it never calls him an archangel. He is a very noteworthy angel, though. Picked out of an innumerable company of angels to be named in the Bible along with Michael. Daniel 9.21 says, Yea, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. So Gabriel can fly swiftly. And this seems to be without wings. He is referred to as a man, as all angels in the Bible are male. Revelation 21, 17 says, And he measured the wall thereof an hundred and forty and four cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel. And Hebrews 13, 2 says, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. So since they are male without wings, you could talk to an angel and think it was just a man. Daniel eight fifteen through 16 says, And it came to pass, when I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision and sought for the meaning, then behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a man. Once again, the angels are male. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of Eulah, which called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. So Gabriel was used to help Daniel understand things from God. Notice a difference here. 
Today, the Lord no longer works this way. Now we use the King James Bible itself, and the Holy Spirit teaches us all things. The Lord also uses pastors and teachers. The Lord is not using angels to explain to us anything. The Lord isn't using angels to communicate to men right now. When you hear of men claiming that angels visited them and given them prophecy, these men are liars. When you hear of men talking to angels that tell them something contrary to the Bible, these men are liars. In Galatians 1, 8 and 9, it says, But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. So many false religions are started by a man claiming he has received revelation from an angel. And if Gabriel or Michael shows up at your door tomorrow claiming to have a message from the Lord, then this is no more than Satan and unclean spirits appearing as angels of light. Gabriel informed Zacharias that he and his wife Elizabeth would have a son named John. In Luke 1, 11 through 13, it says, And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. So Gabriel delivers messages he also delivers the news to Mary concerning her being the virgin mother of Jesus Christ. In Luke 1, 26 through 31, it says, And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art, that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. So Gabriel, out of a innumerable company of angels, was the one chosen to bring the good news of the Son of God coming into the world. Psalms 147.4 says, He telleth the number of the stars, he calleth them all by their names. So the Lord knows the name of every angel, yet he chose the names of two good angels to mention in the Bible. And Proverbs 22.1 says, A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. This is speculation, and I don't have any Bible for it, but I wonder if Gabriel and Michael happen to be extra faithful compared to the other angels, enough to make a name for themselves to where God wanted to put their names in the Bible. You shouldn't try to make a name for yourself. This is something that comes along with serving the Lord. The devil made a horrible name for himself, and you can be known for being good, and you can be known for being bad, so is your name going to be one of those names that sticks out as someone who was good or someone who was evil? And the next angel, another noteworthy angel, is the angel of the Lord. And this is a very mysterious angel. However, if you have studied him, then you will find he is a pre-incarnate appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ. Exodus 3 plainly tells you that the angel of the Lord is God himself. In Exodus 3, 2 through 4, it says, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here am I. So there you see the angel of the Lord was actually God himself. It's a pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus. Also, the, remember the appearance of Jesus Christ in the fiery furnace with the three Hebrew children. In Daniel 3.25, it says, He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, one wa walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. So these are some Noteworthy angels in the King James Bible. Michael, 
the angel that binds Satan, Gabriel, and the angel of the Lord. These are some very noteworthy angels in your Bible. And this has just been a little bit more character, character building for the God's Game of Thrones. The greatest story ever told. It's the Bible. And there's so many amazing characters. So many amazing angels and people in the book. So before we got into the humans, the human character, I wanted to go through the more supernatural characters.